everyone and welcome to episode 45 of the Lofty Loops Yarns podcast. I am your host Allison, the hand dyer behind Lofty Loops Yarns and the person who tries to knit all the things and hardly ever finishes anything. Um, but this is my little space on YouTube to share with you guys what I've been working on recently, uh, maybe some new yarns that have entered the shop, talk about the knit alongs that are currently being hosted in my Ravelry group, um, and otherwise crafty things that I want to chat about. Um, we just uh, finished watching our second football game of college football game of the season, and I live in Nebraska, so I just watched us unfortunately lose to Colorado. Um, so I am cracking open a cider. Um, this is my first drink of the day, surprisingly. I watched that whole entire football game without anything to drink. Um, and now I thought, you know what, we're home and spirits are kind of low because we lost. Um, but this is a good time to share a little bit of what I've been working on. Ooh. Um, for those that might care, this is a Talbot cider. Olamosa. I don't know. It's very orangey with a little bit of lime in a cider. It's pretty good. It was randomly left in uh, my fridge by a friend that came over. So anyway, like I mentioned, if you're new here, I am from Lincoln, Nebraska. I uh, hand dye yarn and sell it in my little corner of the online shopping world at loftyloopsyarns.com. Um, I am a coffee and beer connoisseur, I like to say. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's not going to be what this podcast is about. I will probably stop talking about beer, so I do apologize. Um, but anyway, I don't have too terribly much to share with you guys uh, this evening. I know it's been a couple weeks since I recorded last episode in episode 45. I had kicked off the Plumpy Along, which is a knit along that I'm hosting in my Ravelry group. I'll link it down below in the description box. But I am knitting the Plumpy Shawl by Andrea Mowry. And I decided to host a cow for those of you that might be wanting to also knit it along with me. Um, whips were completely and still are um, totally eligible to enter. Just jump into the chatter threads and start talking away. There's been quite a lot of chatter going on and it's been really fun to see everyone's yarn choices and maybe modifications they're making and things of that nature and kind of cheering each other on. Um, I personally am modifying the pattern to knit it in a fingering weight, and I'll go into that a little bit more here shortly when I show it to you. Um, but the pattern does call for either a sport weight or a DK. She has the two versions, and I decided to go ahead and knit it with a fingering weight yarn. Um, again, I'll go into more detail here shortly, but if you're interested in knitting along, um, with us that is running through November 1st so there's still plenty of time. I will be drawing winners out of the chatter thread and the FO thread so there is really no too terribly much pressure to actually finish. Um, however the grand prize winner will be drawn out of the finished object thread but uh, there will be plenty of winners happening um, in the chatter thread as well. So and then the hashtag plumpy along is being used on Facebook and Instagram to share your progress and just kind of, yeah, just share. So it's been a blast so far. I'm having so much fun seeing everyone's plumpies and I am loving knitting on this pattern. So um, one thing that I don't have to share with you guys today, but I do have a finished object and I actually think it was a finished object last week or last time I recorded. Um, I finished my pavement sweater, and I can't remember if I mentioned that at all, um, but I wanted to mention it here. I have not yet woven in the ends. I have blocked it, um, but it needs a little bit of little bit of TLC before I am totally ready to wear it and then show it off. So uh, next time, hopefully, it's been a little bit too warm here yet to actually 
wear a wool sweater, so uh, although the temperature seems to be slowly declining, so we are almost there and I am so excited. Uh, but the pavement sweater you will have seen here on the podcast before if you're a regular watcher. Um, I That is a pattern by Vera Valamaki, and I knit mine out of House of Alla Mode in the Nordic colorway. And I picked that yarn up from Stephen B's shop in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, it's been on the needles for a while, and I'm really happy to have it done. And I'm really excited to say that I get to wear it when I go to VKL New York in January. So, so excited. Um, all right, I'm looking over here at my stuff. I think I'm just gonna jump right in since I was already chatting about my plumpy shawl and I'll just show you the progress that I have made. And again, this is a pattern by Andrea Mowry um, and it's been out, I think since last winter, so almost a year. Um, loads of people are working on these and they're all beautiful. So here is my progress so far. I am using Hedgehog Fibers in their sock base and this was a kit that was originally um, listed for the Plumpy. So I did not come up with this color scheme on my own. Um, there have been a few others knit out of this uh, I did not get the kit. I just ended up ordering them all individually um, after the fact. So this is the front side. This is the back side. So I'm loving the pop of blue coming in with the brioche. Um, this shawl, like I said, it's very fun. Very good if you're a beginner brioche knitter because there isn't too terribly much brioche. Um, but there's plenty of easy garter stitch if you're watching TV, what have you. So it is going to be an asymmetrical shawl. And you just work every other section, you work half of it in brioche. So you can kind of see that here. And then I am into the next brioche section. Um, I have forgotten how much I love brioche and knitting on it again is making my heart so happy. I love, love, love brioche. Um, anything with brioche, I am like a sucker for and I will knit it forever. And it's so not hard, you guys. Please don't be intimidated by brioche. Um, there are so many good YouTube videos out there and it's almost like riding a bike. I keep telling people that. Yes, it's scary at first. Yes, you'll probably mess it up and have to rip it back a few times, but once it clicks, it, it just clicks and you're off to the races. So again, I'll show you. I'm loving the backside almost more than the front, but that will change as the sections go on and the colors will flip flop. So Yes, um, again, I'm modifying. So this is all Hedgehog Sock, which is a light fingering even, and I am knitting this on a US3 3.25 millimeters. So that is way smaller than the pattern calls for. Um, but I have knit brioche on a size US3 before, and I like the gauge I got, so I went with it. The colors I am using are, if I can remember, this is Rose Hip, which is a really pretty um, pale pink with lots of beautiful speckles. And then my next color is Gossip, which is a deep magenta with, again, loads of beautiful speckles. And then my last color is, I wanna say Bunny Slope, but that is not correct because that is one of my colorways. Beach Bunny. So it's this really pale blue, but it's got the speckles of that deep magenta and some of the speckles carried over from Rose Hip. So they're all working together beautifully. And like I said, I'm just having a blast. I'm not sure I'll get this done by November 1st, but I'm not worried about that because I'm just enjoying it as it happens. It's gonna be so bright. So, so bright, so pretty. So yes, that is my plumpy, and I have really been knitting on this pretty monogamously lately. Um, darn it, I just remembered. The reason I haven't been knitting a lot recently 
was because I ended up getting an electric eel wheel nano and I just might have to run up and grab it. I didn't bring it down, um, but maybe I'll end up filming a separate video where I chat a little bit about the electric eel wheel and show you my spinning that I've done on it so far. I have been spinning like crazy lately. I've taken it in the car with me. Um, it has a USB plug, so as well as a wall plug. Um, and again, I can get into this further later or in a second episode or a, a bonus episode, if you will. Um, but yeah, so it's super portable, it's super light, and honestly, I can fit it in my purse if I really wanted to, which is awesome. So that is from Dreaming Robots. I'll link it in the show notes. Um, but now that I'm talking more about it, I think it's going to deserve to be its own video. So look for that soon. I'll try to do that yet this weekend um, and get that up for you guys. So that is one of the main reasons that I have not been knitting a lot lately because I've been addicted to spinning on this adorable little purple magic wheel. Um, but when I am knitting... I am knitting on my plumpy because, you know, a cow, I have to do decent in my own cow. I've never done good in my own cows. <laughs> I've never done good in any cow. I don't know if I've ever actually entered a finished object. I am the epitome of the knitter with cast on itis. Like if you look that up in the knitter's dictionary somewhere, you're going to see this face because I just can't stop. I just, I just can't stop. And you know what? I'm okay with that. I enjoy the process. I enjoy casting on beautiful yarns. Every now and again I'll actually finish something. Um, and just today, I don't know if I've shared this on the podcast yet, maybe I have, um, but today since we were watching football over at my brother-in-law's house, I wanted to not have my plumpy because it does take just a little bit of concentration. Um, and I knew we would be chatting and obviously watching the game and snacking and stuff. So I wanted something pretty portable. So I took this little bag along with me. This bag is by Luna Pie Designs and that is Amy. She is an Omaha native and I've had the pleasure of meeting her multiple times and she was having a pop-up pop-up shop at um, Imagine It Yarn Shop when I was there doing a trunk show and um, yeah, I snagged this pineapple bag and I have adored it ever since. My little pins on there are of course Grocery Girls and Leon Alexander Yarns. They are both glittery, gli yeah, glittery. <laughs> and uh, they match the pineapples very well. So it just makes me happy. Um, but inside, I have cast on a couple weeks ago the Ripple Crop. Nope, the Ripple Bralette. I was close. Jessie May Martinson. I am so sorry. Um, that is Jessie made design. Um, anyway, I'm sure you guys have all seen these before, but this is the Ripple Bralette, and it is just a ribbed, right now, it's just a ribbed circle. Um, there is some what do you call it? Oh my gosh, my brain literally just shut off. But anyway, this is the cuff portion of it and then you're working this bottom up. So I am just working on the body of the bralette and at some point I will add the um, like the triangle areas for the boobs and then add on some straps. So I'm having fun with this. I know everyone and their mom is knitting one of these and with good reason. It's a great pattern and it's like I said, it's so mindless. It's just a um, just a rib pattern and really you just can kind of sit back and have fun. The yarn is some I've had around for quite a while and it is Plank and Stella in the Festivus Miracle version 2. And this is on her sock base. I can't remember exactly, and I don't think I have the tag, but it is her sock base, um, plied sock yarn, fingering weight. So again, the Ripple Bralette, and it looks super small, especially for me. I'm like, oh, that's not, I mean, barely wide enough for my head. But I know that people have said that it looks 
uber tiny as you're knitting it, but it because it's ribbed, it will stretch like crazy. And in the event that it doesn't stretch enough for me, um, I will likely gift it to my daughter who is 12 and she will look adorable in it. Plus it's like bright neon colors, so she would probably love it anyway. So there you have it. Um, that is all I have as far as knitting content goes. Like I said, I have been spinning quite a bit. I will make a separate video for that, so keep your eyes peeled. Um, a lot of people have been asking for a review of um, the Nano after I've been posting photos on Instagram. Um, so I will do a little bit of a review. I'm still pretty new with it, but um, I think it might be nice to have like a kind of out of the box first impressions review, if you will, because um, there are some quirks. So I will chat about that some more in the coming video. Um, so in terms of stash enhancement, besides getting that wheel from Dreaming Robots, I forgot that I had signed up again for the Jimmy Beans Wool Indie Club, which is a monthly club through Jimmy Beans Wool, and they have different clubs um, depending on kind of what you're after or what your taste may be. I had signed up previously for the Indie Club, which is from a random indie yarn dyer a month. Um, in which I showed off, I believe on the last episode, it was a junk yarn skein and I totally forgot that that auto renews. <laughs> so a box ended up showing up, um, with another one. And this is another new to me dyer, which I'm really excited about, but this is KT in the squid. And this was, gosh, I don't know. It must've been, does it say, I don't know. This was last month. It showed up like within the last couple weeks. So maybe it was July, nope, August, must have been August. Um, but this colorway is called Jackpot and it is a Jimmy Beans Wool exclusive on a squid sock base, which is a 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon, three, 437 yards and it is a fingering weight. So uh, this is my colors all day long. So blues, purples, pinks, yes please. So this is right up my alley and I'm super happy with it. Um, it was a nice little surprise that I was not intending to get. So that's really fun. I am really excited that I now have two new to me dyers to play around with. Um, and yeah, this will become probably a beautiful pair of socks. I also received my second installment of the Vine Gothic Yarn Club. Kristen is the hand dyer behind Woolen Vine Yarns and the podcaster behind what was previously known as the Yarngasm podcast, but is now just the Woolen Vine podcast. Um, I have been watching her forever. Like I have gone back to the beginning and watched her episode one and worked my way all the way up. I watch her every time she comes out. Um, I love her aesthetic. And while I don't know that I can pull off the things that she makes, um, everything that she is and like talks about is what I am after. So I don't know, she's very, I'm sure you're all aware, but her colorways that she dyes just like so my aesthetic. Um, and I have so many skeins of her yarn because I love them and I hoard them and I covet them. <laughs> um, but when she announced her Gothic Yarn Club, which is a three month subscription, I could not not get it. So this is, the second one, this is a Strange Rue color, which is her one-of-a-kind batches. They can't be redone. Um, and yeah, this is on the Nouveau base, which is 100% Superwash Merino. So I love a good single ply. And this is Carmilla. And it is just this like blood maroon, red, deep, gothic-y, just gorgeous. So like I said right up my alley. Um, I don't think I've ever received anything from her that I was like, nope, everything has been 100% spot on with just me and my knitter heart. So really beautiful. I love all of her stuff. Um, definitely check her out if you have not. Watch her podcast. She also just recently got a wheel 
uh, the Nano Wheel and posted, I think, in her one of her latest episodes, she had a little segment um, going over the wheel too. So um, if you're interested in getting, you know, more opinions about it. Um, and I believe she is a more seasoned spinner than I am. She's definitely been spinning longer than me. Um, so there's that too. But anyway, beautiful. When Melissa of Plank and Stella posted on Instagram, um, she posted a colorway recently that I made heart eyes over. But I was like, you know what? I have enough yarn. I'm not going to do it right now. It's beautiful, but I'll let someone else have it. Um, I'm trying to be better, you guys. You wouldn't know it by my stash enhancement section, but I'm really trying to be better. Um, it was beautiful, and I loved it. I passed it up. And then a little while after that, she posted that she had sock sets of it in 50 gram skeins with a mini. And I was like, okay, I'll bite. So this is from Plank and Stella, and I love her little logo. Um, and that is Melissa, and she is Plank and Stella on Instagram. And this is the Succulents colorway. And so this is a four ply sock set, which is another 7525 superwash merino nylon. And there is 231 yards in the 50 gram skein of the succulent colorway. And then a 92 yards in a 20 gram skein of this matching mini to make socks out of. So very pastel-y, very pretty again right up my alley. So I'm really happy to have that. And since, you know, I already broke the seal by buying more yarn, I grabbed another one of her sock sets, which is called Pop of Lime. And this is going to definitely be a pair of socks for probably my daughter or my son if I can manage to get a pair of socks out of a 50 gram skein for him. Um, just this pretty bright purple, bright neon green, with a neon green mini. So that's Pop of Lime. And again, I mean, maybe they won't even end up being socks. Who knows? Um, you can do a lot with a 50 gram skein of yarn. So maybe it could be another brioche hat. Um, I don't know. But either way, I couldn't resist them. So they came home with me. Um, the last thing I wanted to share with you guys for stash enhancement is not necessarily yarn related, um, but definitely amazing. Um, and I've had this for a while, but keep forgetting to bring it with me when I podcast. Um, but a while back, I mentioned that my sister-in-law was beginning to, uh, or creating a business and opening an Etsy shop for um, some glitter tumblers. I'm not sure if you guys uh, have seen the glitter tumblers on, you know, they've been around there on Etsy, um, on Instagram. They're super cute. She made me one that is in the Lofty Loops Yarns brand color, so the purple and blue, and it has the logo on it, and it's very glittery and very pretty. Um, and I use it at work every day. That's my water jug. It's a big 32 ounce, um, the hog, I think, hog tumblers. When she opened up her Etsy shop and opened up custom order listings, I jumped on and I ordered another mug from her. Um, and this one, this is so not going to come across well on camera, but if you guys could see this in real life, oh my lanta. Uh, it is a, I don't know what it's called, is it a wine? Maybe I'll just look it up. Um, it's like a wine glass. I think it is for like a traveling wine cup, um, but it's got the plastic lid, obviously, and you can put a straw in it or you can just drink it straight like that. So it is the metal tumbler. And then she has, where I ordered it with this rose gold glitter that is just giving me life. I wish it would show up more sparkly on camera. Um, the whole thing, it's glitterized and then there's, it's sealed with epoxy. So it is very, I mean, you can't feel the glitter. It's very smooth. Um, you can wash this, you can do all the things, 
you know, cold drinks, hot drinks, what have you, wine, I guess. Um, but yeah, she has uh, a link to her shop down in the description box below. She is rolling out some plaid ones, so it's all glitter plaid for fall. Oh my gosh, like it's only a matter of time before I order another one and my husband goes, how many tumblers do you need? And I'm like, how many fishing poles do you need? Like, let's be honest, how many hats do you need? Come on now, don't judge me. Um, but I really wanted to share this with you guys because if you have the ability to check out her shop and maybe pick one up for yourself, you would not regret it. Um, she can put any sayings on them. They're fully customizable. She has loads of different glitter options and they're all beautiful. Um, my niece right now um, is currently making one. Um, she's My adult niece is making one with her and it says it's got the little girl from the, the salt. Um, the salt container and it says don't be a salty bitch on it <laughs> and I just think it's too funny um this one I knew I just wanted it to be like classy and elegant and sparkles so I chose not to have any words on it or any pictures but like I said um hit her up message her she is um Polly Llama on Instagram as well where she's posting tons of photos of um, the tumbler she's making so you can kind of see the behind the scenes which is always super cool to see um, but again a link to her Etsy shop and she is taking custom orders and she's super awesome so just send her a message and tell her your idea um, and I'm sure she'd love to like work with you to make you exactly what you want so she is going to be rolling out some ready to ship tumblers too so keep your eyes peeled for those um, but right now it's all just custom order so she can make it to how you want it. So, um, yeah, Woo. we are flying through this y'all. Um, I recently had a shop update and by recently, I mean earlier today at noon, um, central time. So the shop is full. Um, I did sell quite a bit, so thank you to everyone that shopped the update. Um, but there is still there's still yarn in the shop um, in all the colorways, so nothing sold out as of recording this right now. Um, and so I am just going to. I might have spoke too soon. My watch literally just went off, saying I had an order. <laughs> um, so you know, check it out at your own risk, I guess. But. Um, fret not because everything that I am sharing with you here shortly and everything that's gone in for the update is all repeatable and it will be continued. It will continue to be restocked um, through fall, the fall season. So there will be more. First up is a new tonal and this is Sunday afternoon. It is just a beautiful silvery tonal gray. Um, semi-solid, no speckles, no variegation, um, and this is similar to my Sunday morning colorway, which is the exact same base, but it does have speckles on it, and so this is Sunday afternoon, and then this is Jiggy Darling, which is another tonal semi-solid colorway. Um, this is a really bright, almost bubblegum Barbie pink I would say. It's coming across maybe a little purple here on camera but if you could envision like the Mattel Barbie heels like those pink heels this is about that color. Um, and Jiggy is Lisa Vanderpump's dog, her beloved dog and um, this this colorway is totally inspired by Lisa Vanderpump from The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, so she's kind of my spirit animal. One thing I did notice when I was dyeing these up um, is they would make a fantastic kit for the new Stephen West knit along. So you need four skeins, two of each color, and high contrast, and I thought how stunning would the pink and gray be together. So there is a pre-order for the kits, all four of these together in the shop um, on multiple different bases. So you can pick the base you want, um, but they're also available as the individual ready to ship skeins. So Jiggy Darling and Sunday Afternoon. 
I have restocked Mother of Dragons, which was a colorway from around the time of the finale of Game of Thrones. So it is another gray, although this is a warmer gray, not as cool silvery, more of a beigey gray, if you will. Um, and then it's got lots of speckles of greens and yellows and golds in there. So it's another really pretty colorway. Um, I just love that color, that green that comes across. So that is restocked. A new colorway for the fall season is Cherry Cordial. And this is so hard to photograph and I hope it'll come across better on camera. Um, but it is a pinky brown base with a little bit of mauve hues and then it's got some deeper maroon speckles throughout. So like I said, it's this is one of the hardest colorways I've ever dyed to get a true photo of. So the ones that I've posted on the on the website and on Instagram are about as close as I can humanly get them. Um, but this is one of my favorite colorways right now. It is so beautiful. Another new colorway for fall is Gather. This is a really pretty kind of evergreeny green, kind of a lighter pretty green. And then it's got speckles of orange and red and gold, more greens. So it's just a really pretty fall kind of rustic color. Gather. And then Sally. If you guys have been around for a while, Sally is one of my hands down favorite uh, colorway to dye. Sally was based off of Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas two years ago as I was just getting my dyeing uh, be under me and Sally only comes around during the Halloween season so this will only be dyed from now uh, through Halloween so it is very limited very seasonal um, and it is so much fun to kind of see how my dye style has affected it over the years um, if you have been around for a while and maybe you've even purchased some in the last couple years you may notice that it is slightly different and I think I use the same recipe, the same way I've always dyed it, but I think it just comes down to, you know, things change just a tiny bit here and there and you learn more stuff and you kind of hone your craft. So yeah, it's been fun to see how much it's been changing. So if you have bought Sally previously and you buy Sally this year, it may not look the same, exactly the same. Um, but again, same recipe, same dyes, everything. It's just, I have changed, I guess, in my dye style a little bit over the last couple years. Um, Sally is also one, I just want to preface this by saying Sally is one of those that has a mind of her own. Um, and she, each batch comes out slightly different than the last. Um, no matter how meticulous I get, it just is the way it is. So if you are wanting multiples of something for, let's say, a sweater or what have you, um, and there isn't enough quite yet in the shop, please just message me so I can set you up with a custom order. Um, that way I can make sure that they all come out of the same batch and they all match um, because I would hate for you to grab a couple here and then maybe a couple in a month from now and they look slightly different. So if that is something you're interested in, please don't hesitate to message me either through Instagram or you can email me or through the shop. Um, but just a heads up, Sally changes every time and I think it totally fits with, um, with her namesake's personality. <laughs> <laughs> so Sally and I think right now there may still be some in the shop however um, they did sell fairly quickly so um, but fret not like I said there will be plenty more and I will dye more batches of them for the next round and get those up across multiple bases so that is all I have for shop update there is one other kit in there for the Stephen West knit along if you're curious or you want to check it out but that uh, is up in the shop for you to look at under the kit section and I still have three skein kits ready to go ready to ship 
um, if you are in the shawl making mood and you need three skeins, so feel free to check those out as well. And uh, one other thing I wanted to mention, I think I am going to be setting up a Patreon account. Um, if you are unfamiliar with Patreon, it is a way to... Um, you can become a patron of creators. And I, I may have mentioned this in the past. I know a few months ago I was kind of toying the idea around my head, um, but hadn't quite come to terms with how I would do this or whatnot. Um, but I think I'm just going to go for it and see how it goes. I think that's the best way. I'm just going to, like I do everything else, just dive in head first. And if I have to back out, I have to back out. Um, so anyway, I will be setting up a Patreon account. The first tier will be $1 a month. So basically you pledge to donate $1 a month to the Lofty Loops Yarns brand, which will allow me to have a little bit more time um, and supplies and um, just the ability to get more content out to you guys, whether that be on social media, that be on um, maybe more patterns. I know a lot of people have been asking about more sock knitting tutorials here on Instagram or on YouTube. Um, maybe some dye tutorials and some dye along videos. I know I've done a couple in the past, but wanting to go more in depth a little bit with those and share some stuff. Um, and as of right now, I just don't have the ability to fit those in with my life as it stands right now. I have two teenage children who are ultra busy. I have uh, a full-time job still, so everything I do for Lofty Loops happens after my 40 hour a week job. Um, so life is busy and I think getting into the Patreon space and seeing how many people are actually interested in me adding more substance to the content I'm putting out, um, I think will really help me. So in the end, I'm not just completely stressing myself out or wasting my time getting all this out to you and you guys can maybe care less and you're like, well, whatever. And um, so yeah, we'll just kind of play it by ear and see how it goes. But what I am thinking is it'll start at $1 a month. That's it. So you just pledge to donate $1 a month to the Lofty Loops Yarns entity. <laughs> <laughs> Patreon account. Um, and when you do that, I am going to add a Facebook group. You will get invited to the Facebook group if you're on Facebook. If you want, it will be a closed group so only Patreons can enter um, where you guys can chat there. You can ask me direct questions. I will try to be uh, posting in there pretty regularly. Things like that. So it'll just be a little bit more of a smaller feel, if you will. Kind of more... Um, an intimate chat, I guess, um, an intimate group. So um, you will get that and then you have access to Patreon. And on Patreon, I am going to start posting little bonus videos, um, which will be more in-depth videos. So maybe it's knitting socks, maybe it's um, knitting brioche, maybe it's spinning on my nano wheel, maybe it's prepping fiber, maybe it's dyeing, things of that nature, just little bonus episodes. Um, I will be posting them there. So instead of posting them on YouTube for everyone to see, the Patreons will get to see that um, either first for the, you know, a, a, a set amount of time before the general public gets to see them, or maybe it'll just be forever. I haven't quite got there yet. Um, but that is what I'm thinking. If you would like to... Um, join the $5 tier. So there will be a $1 tier and that will get you everything. Um, but if you want to join the $5 tier, that is like, you know, basically helping enable my Starbucks addiction that I have and getting me a pumpkin spice latte once a month. Um, <laughs> um, cause you know, more caffeine equals more content and more things being done. Right. Um, but yeah, if, if you want to donate $5, I will love you for it. Um, there will probably be some sort of extra perk in that um, for being so awesome as to buy me a cup of coffee every month. Um, but again, you'll have access to all of the stuff as the one tier. So that's where I'm going to start. Um, we'll just see how it goes. Please bear with me and 
definitely give me any feedback. I would love your suggestions. I would love what you like, maybe what you don't like, what's not working, things like that. Please let's make this a back and forth, um, give and take type thing. I don't want to just be sitting here word vomiting um, for you guys. I want it to be, you know, information that you want. So um, I will attempt to get that set up and ready so I can leave a link down below. But if I don't get it up and ready by the time I get this video out to you, uh, I will link to it in the footer of my website at loftyloopsyarns.com. So there will be a link that says Patreon. Um, you can get to it from there, or I'm sure I will link to it through my bio on Instagram. So we're going to see how that goes. <laughs> uh, life stuff. So my daughter had her first seventh grade volleyball game today, this morning. That was really fun. It is so exciting to see the girls actually volleying the ball back and forth across the net. Like they are actually getting skills and doing things. Uh, the last time she played volleyball was on a YMCA team that I had to coach because no one else stepped up to volunteer to coach. And the only volleyball I've played in the last 20 years is sand volleyball, where I'm also drinking pitchers of beer. So, you know, making me the authority to try to teach these tiny girls how to play volleyball was probably not the best. But we made it through the season. Um, we all learned a lot. But if they happen to get it over the net, it was like everyone won. Like, the game is over, you win. Um, hallelujah, you made it over the net. <laughs> so they've definitely stepped it up since then, um, being that they're all 12 year olds now. And I think they can retain the knowledge and, you know, it's clicking. Um, so that was a blast to go to this morning. Um, she will have games every weekend now for the next few weeks. So that'll be really fun. Um, she had a blast too. She, she scored four points off serves. Um, so we were really proud of her and she was really proud of herself. So it's just so much fun. Um, as far as things I've been watching, I plowed through all of Carnival Row, I think last weekend. That is on Amazon Prime. It is with Orlando Bloom and is it Cara Delevingne? Cara, Cara, yep. Uh, Delevingne? Maybe it's Delevingne. Um, it is unlike anything I've ever watched before, which was really refreshing. Um, it was really interesting. But also, it was pretty good. I can't, I'm still undecided on whether it was like, it was so good, or whether it was just like, it was good. It was different. Um, yeah, it's worth a watch. So that is, like I said, Amazon Prime. That was Carnival Row. And I watched all of season two of Mindhunter on Netflix. My husband and I watched season one of True Detective on HBO. Um, that was good. That was intense. I hear season two is not quite as good, but we'll probably still watch it because Colin Farrell and I love Rachel McAdams and she's in it. So um, otherwise, I mean, we've like been plowing through a lot of TV. <laughs> so I need more suggestions of things to watch because I'm finishing all of these seasons and now I don't know what to do. I did, however, find out that One Tree Hill is on Hulu all of the seasons, so I may restart One Tree Hill and go way back to my teenage days. We'll see. Um, and I just purchased Final Fantasy VIII, the remaster. I am a huge Final Fantasy nerd. I love them all. I've played them all since eight. Um, Ten is my ultimate favorite, hands down, which I've played through multiple times. Um, but I remember being younger and getting stuck on eight and I never finished. So I was like, well, the remaster is out. We'll check this out. So I've been kind of geeking out and playing that quite a bit. And um, yeah, football season's here. So not only will there be volleyball games on Saturdays, there will also be football games on Saturdays. And we're literally, fall is so busy and I love it. I love getting ready for Halloween and it's just getting ready for Thanksgiving. We're just heading straight into my favorite time of year and I'm so excited that it's here. So 
Um, anyway, I think before I babble on too much more, I think that's where I'm going to leave you guys. Um, so I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. And like I said, be on the lookout. I will film another video talking about my electric eel wheel nano and the spinning I've been doing on that because I've been obsessed. Um, and yeah, look for that Patreon. Um, if you guys are interested, awesome. Um, I would give you all big virtual hugs. Um, if you're not interested and it's not your thing, that's totally cool with me. I am not going to keep anything, um, not going to change anything I'm doing now. So other than adding in little bonuses, obviously for the Patreons, but, um, I am totally okay. If that's just, you're not into it, that's totally fine. Um, I understand. So, but for those that are, I wanted to give you guys the option. And like I said, I, I really want to get out some more content to you guys. So I think this will allow me to do that a bit better. So anyway, cheers to you. Have a great Saturday evening or whatever that's Saturday for me. But by the time I get this up, it probably won't be Saturday anymore. Um, and happy knitting. Bye.